Hello, everybody. This is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming with Paul and Adrian. This is October the 9th on Monday. Sorry about that. I had the other screen on. So um, we have some more breaking news uh, this morning, but I want to welcome everyone to our live chat. Um, folks, things are just getting out of control, but I want to share with you some information. Um, that is probably 100% correct. Um, I'm going to play you a short video uh, of an Israeli soldier who just put this video out. This is uh, probably going viral on the uh, on Twitter, on Telegram. But um, she is telling the truth. And I want to let you know, folks, there is no way, there is no way in this world that the Mossad, that the Israeli intelligence did not know this was going to happen. There is no way that they uh, did not know that Hamas was planning this invasion. There's no way, folks, because the Israeli border is one of the most secure borders in the entire world. They have guard posts, they have cameras, they have dogs. They have fences. The Israeli border is protected. And this was a setup. They're calling uh, this invasion of Israel, Israel's 9-11. Well, remember what happened to America's 9-11? America's 9-11 was also a setup by the U.S. government, for all of you guys that didn't know. When the Pentagon was hit, it wasn't hit by an airliner. The Pentagon was hit by a Navy cruise missile at ground level, folks. There are security videos, and I don't know if I have it up, but I have a video of the actual missile hitting the side of the Pentagon just a few feet off the ground. That was a lie. 9-11 was a lie. It was set up to get us into the war on terror. 9-11 was orchestrated by the U.S. and other governments to get us in the, into the 20-year 20 20 war on terror. That was a setup. Our government brought those two buildings down in New York City, whether you want to believe it or not. And building number seven fell down just like the World Trade Center buildings. One and two. Building seven was not hit. It was not damaged, yet it collapsed just like the other two. Why? because it was a controlled demolition. So they're calling what happened in Israel, Israel's 9-11. Just like our 9-11 was set up by the government, well, I believe that this tragedy, and it is a tragedy, folks, what, what is happening in Israel right now, what has happened in the last 48 hours is a tragedy. That many, many innocent people have been killed for a bigger goal. You have to remember the last two or three months, Benjamin Netanyahu uh, was in trouble. There was uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people in Israel protesting the government of Benjamin Netanyahu because he was taking dictatorial powers in Israel. He was pushing through legislation that gave him dictatorial powers. Even on the day that this happened, there were protesters and protests going on all around Israel. Even the uh, the Israeli military, even officers and even reservists in Israel uh, said that they would quit. They would resign their posts because of the move that Netanyahu was making. But I wanna make it perfectly clear. I stand with Israel, I stand with the Jewish people, but I do not stand with corrupt governments around the world. You know that most governments of the world, most governments of the world are corrupt. Their leaders, their politicians are corrupt, folks, including the United States of America, including our own government. The Ukrainian government's corrupt. The Russian government's corrupt. The Israeli government's corrupt. Every government in the world is corrupt. Their politicians are corrupt. I'm sorry. And most of them are evil. So I do believe that this was allowed to happen in Israel. I do believe that this horrible attack 
that you're seeing all over your screen, all of these innocent people killed at a music festival, all of these people mowed down at bus stops, killed in their homes, killed on the streets, killed in their cars, was allowed to happen for one reason and one reason only. Well, actually, there's a couple reasons. One reason was to get the pressure and the heat off of the Netanyahu government. The second reason was to make an excuse to attack Iran and destroy Iran and to destroy the Hamas terrorists in Gaza and get rid of Hezbollah in Lebanon. They had to make a, an event happen that was so tragic, just like 9-11 happened in 2001 in New York City where over 3,000 people were killed the World Trade Center, they had to have something so horrible, so dramatic that the whole country and the whole Western world will get behind them and finally allow them to take out Iran, to destroy their nuclear weapons, to destroy their nuclear sites. That's the real reason this happened, folks. Believe me, the Mossad was not sleeping. Is, uh, Israeli intelligence was not sleeping while this happened, they knew exactly what was going to happen and they allowed it to happen. Now, did they do it? No, they didn't do it. Israeli soldiers did not kill Israeli citizens. They did not do it. They, they allowed the Hamas terrorists to, to do the dirty work, but they, believe me, they allowed it to happen. And once again, I stand with the state of Israel. I stand with the Jewish people. I stand with the Jewish people, but the Jewish people are not in control of their government, just like the people in the United States. We're not in control of our government, are we, folks? Are we in control of our government? No, we're not. Our government does what it wants to do, whether you voted for them or not. You know, we have a Republican Party. We have a Democratic Party in our, in, in our country. But it doesn't matter whether you're Republican or Dem Democrat. Once the politicians go to Washington, D.C., they do exactly what they want. They don't care about you and me. And that is exactly the same thing that happens in Israel, in Russia, in Ukraine, and all of the other countries in the entire world. The politicians and the government does things that are contrary to the well-being of their own citizens for different reasons. So Israel has been trying to convince the United States for over 20 years to let them attack Iran. And we always said no. George Bush said no. When George Bush was president of the United States, he would not let Israel attack Iran. Obama didn't let him attack Iran. Donald Trump didn't let Netanyahu attack Iran. So now they had to create something so horrible. And you, you know, I know a lot of people is going to disagree with me, but folks, the Mossad is probably one of the best or the number one intelligence agency in the entire world. And there is no way in hell, no way on this earth that they did not know this was going to happen. They have agents all over Gaza, the West Bank. Iran, and other Arab nations. They have Mossad agents that are infiltrated inside of the terrorist organization. They knew this was going to happen. Did they uh, cause it? No, but they let it happen. They let it happen so we could get into a nuclear war. That is the goal. We will be going to a nuclear war. We have reports coming in that the United States is sending B-52 bombers to Israel, to the Middle East. There will be a war between Israel and Iran, and we will be involved. U.S. bases will be hit. This is taking us into the nuclear war, and I believe so the Antichrist can come to power. What you're seeing unfold right before your very eyes, this is setting up the Antichrist to come upon the earth and take power, folks. If this escalates to a nuclear war, and I think it will, then you will probably see martial law in America. They will clamp down on your freedoms. There will be a suppression of all news on the Internet, on YouTube. 
during martial law if we are attacked. If for some reason we start having terrorist attacks in America by radical Muslims, and I do want to apologize, folks. We did our broadcast last night. I do want to apologize to all the Muslims out there. Folks, not all Muslims are terrorists. I, I want to make that public apology. Not all Muslims are terrorists, just like not all Christians are fanatics. You know, um, I was very uh, stressed out yesterday from all the news. And sometimes you say things and you're not aware of what you're saying. So I want to apologize to the Muslims. Not all Muslims are in a terrorist organization. There are actually some very good Muslim people. But they do worship a different God than we do. They worship Allah and they worship the Prophet Muhammad, just like Christians worship Jesus Christ and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So I did want to make that public apology. And a Muslim is not a race. It is a religion. I want to correct that also. So, folks, I do come back and I do correct myself. You know, when I am wrong, I will be man enough to come back on and make an apology and correct some statements that I made. Uh, Muslim, being a Muslim, is a religion, not a race. There are many, many Muslims in the Mideast, and they are from Jordan, they are from Lebanon, they are from Saudi Arabia, Qatar, uh, Iran, Turkey. They are all different regions, but their religion is the Muslim religion. So I just wanted to correct that. So what we are looking at, we are looking at a major escalation. Over 300 uh, Israeli soldiers, over 300 Israeli soldiers, 300,000, I'm sorry, over 300,000 Israeli soldiers have been activated, and that's just a start. Um, over 100,000 will be going into Gaza probably in the next 24 to 48 hours. But I want you to uh, listen to this. I want to play this. You know, um, my channel is very controversial. For some reason, uh, I don't know what it is, but I happen to rub a lot of people the wrong way, um, even Christians. I, I seem to irritate a lot of people on our channel, and I don't do it intentionally, folks. I really don't. I'm just trying to give you the truth. I'm trying to give you my opinion of what I think is happening in the world. And I think that irritates a lot of people, you know, uh, Christians, Muslims, uh, I irritate a lot of people and I don't do it on purpose. I'm sorry if I bother you, if uh, you disagree with me, but I do have a right to my opinion and you have also a right to make your own YouTube channel and put your own videos up, folks. You know, you have that right. So I'm going to play this for you. This is uh, an Israeli soldier. She is part of the Israeli uh, Defense Forces, and uh, she made a brief statement telling you in Hebrew what I think everybody else knows, that this attack in Israel was allowed to happen so Israel could go to war with Iran. That's the main reason, to take Iran out. And I think that history will prove her right and me right that this was a setup, folks, just like 9-11 was a setup in the United States. So I'm going to go ahead and play this right now. תקשיבו רגע, אני שירתתי כסמב"צית חי"ר במהלך מלחמת צוק איתן, אני שירתתי באוגדת עזה, כל השירות שלי היה תומכת לחימה בזמן מלחמת צוק איתן שאז הייתה באוגדת עזה. תקשיבו לי ותקשיבו לי טוב, אין מצב בעולם שיכולה להיות כזאת התקרבות לגדר. אוקיי? Okay? מבלי שאנחנו לא נדע מזה. התצפיתניות יושבות בבונקרים ארבע שעות, הן לא יכולות לעשות ככה, הן מול מסך. לא יכול להיות מצב, שום מצב, שהיו מעירים אותי בלילה על יונה, על חסידה שהתקרבה לגדר, על, 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 על מקק שעבר מתחת לגדר, היו מקפיצים את כל הגזרה. איך נכנסו עם טרקטורים? איך נכנסו עם טרקטורים, 400 איש ואף אחד לא שם לב. זה לא...
שתשתפו את הסרטון הזה כמה שיותר, כי תקשיבו רגע, אני שירתתי כסמב"צית חי"ר במהלך מלחמת צוק איתן, אני שירתתי באוגדת עזה, כל השירות שלי היה תומכת לחימה בזמן מלחמת צוק איתן שאז הייתה, באוגדת עזה. תקשיבו לי ותקשיבו לי טוב, אין מצב בעולם שיכולה להיות כזאת התקרבות לגדר, אוקיי? מבלי שאנחנו לא נדע מזה. התצפיתניות יושבות בבונקרים ארבע שעות, הן לא יכולות לעשות ככה, הן מול מסך. לא יכול להיות מצב, שום מצב, שהיו מעירים אותי בלילה על יונה, על חסידה שהתקרבה לגדר, על, 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 על מקק שעבר מתחת לגדר, היו מקפיצים את כל הגזרה. איך נכנסו עם טרקטורים, איך נכנסו עם טרקטורים, 400 איש ואף אחד לא שם לב. So that was the video from the Israeli soldier. She was uh, in the war in 2014. So folks, you know, I tell the truth, I, or, or, or I try uh, the best I can to give you the most accurate information. And um, this is, uh, you know, I think this is a setup. But I, I do want to iterate. I stand with the Jewish people. And I stand with the American people. I don't agree with our government. Do you agree with the Biden government? No, but I'm an American. I'm a patriot. I love America. I stand with the American people. I stand with the Jewish people, but I do not stand with the evil governments around the world. There are evil governments around the world that have their own agenda. They want to bring in the New World Order. They want to bring in the Antichrist. They want to bring in the One World Government, the One World Financial System. And they have to have a nuclear war, folks. They have to have something so major that they could do the Great Reset. You know what the Great Reset is? The Great Reset. So what you're seeing play out before you has been planned. And it looks like the United States of America is going to uh help with the attack against iran if that happens then don't be surprised if you see uh terrorist attacks start happening in america like you did in israel i'm sorry folks but that's what it will trigger it will trigger repercussions in our own country like we talked about last night so i wanted to play that video for you and just give you some of that information um It does look like that Hamas is expanding, uh, is expanding uh, their control over parts of Israel. It doesn't really look good for Israel. Um, will they gain the upper hand? Probably will. But right now, there is still a lot of fighting uh, going on. So this is some of the latest news. Uh, the Hamas commander of their military intelligence says they are totally successful. Uh, it's been a totally successful operation so far. They are reinforcing uh, their parts of Israel that they have taken control over. Shocking data was released by the Russian analysts emphasizing that Hamas, until last night, managed to expand the control zone in an attempt to reach Hebron. The maps presented by the Russians are relentless as they show the Israeli army floundering for a second day. The Russians are congratulating whoever planned Hamas operation as a military intelligence. So let me show you the maps. Uh, he said the movement of Hamas forces, despite the apparent ease in which Palestinian groups wreak havoc on Israel lands, they deserve credit. This is what the Russians are saying. So, folks, you know. I'm not a Putin licker. I'm not a Russian licker. I support Israel. I support the land of Israel. And I want to show you uh, some of these, uh, these maps, um, if I can find it. So this is one of the maps. Uh, let me go down and show you a better map. All right, this is the better map. So this is the Gaza Strip on the left here. This is uh, where the Palestinians live, the Gaza Strip. All of this yellow area is under control of Hamas, believe it or not. 
which is twice as big, almost twice as big as the Gaza Strip. So the Hamas terrorists are controlling all of this territory in the yellow into Israel. Marie Ofafam, uh, Tez Elim, Serdat, all of these towns and villages right next to the Gaza Strip is under the control of the Hamas terrorists. So you can, um, you can see how serious this is right now. This is very serious. And Israel has still not gotten the area under control. So, um, they're blaming this on Iran, which Iran did help plan this, folks. The country of Iran did help plan this war, but Israel let it happen. See, that's the part. They knew it was going to happen, but they let it happen because they needed an excuse to attack Iran. So they let it happen. So they would have a 9-11 of their own. So let me get this next article on the screen. Um, Ukraine will be forgotten with the war in the Middle East. 300,000 Israeli reservists are now in arms. A total siege of Gaza has begun. So there will be a massive attack by the Israeli army into Gaza in the next 24 to 48 hours. And it will result in a lot of innocent people getting killed, folks, on both sides. Israel has proceeded with the largest mobilization since the official establishment of its state. Since 1948, calling to arms 300,000 reservists just for starters within 48 hours. According to the IDF spokesman, 100,000 troops will initially begin the ground operation and enter Gaza. At the same time, the Northern Front on the border with Lebanon and Hezbollah will be strengthened. The ground operation is expected to begin in the next 24 to 48 hours. Total siege of Gaza has begun. Israeli Defense Minister Yavat Galat announced that he has ordered a total siege of the Gaza Strip with no food, fuel, or electricity to allow to enter the Gaza Strip with anything else. So they are putting a total siege. He said there are still... Seven communities, this is coming in from the British Broadcasting uh, BBC Breakfast. There are still seven communities inside Israel where there are terrorists, Hamas gunmen fighting inside civilian communities inside of Israel. So this is a... Um, the situation is we're still... This is a uh, Israeli spokesman. Uh, let me get this on the screen and play this for you. The situation is we're still fighting on the ground. There's still seven communities inside uh, Israel where there's terrorists, Hamas gunmen fighting uh, between, inside a civilian community with his families, grandmothers, with our soldiers. Uh, so we're still fighting, uh, fighting back, basically. Um, in seven communities, uh, there's one hostage community still in uh, Kibbutz Nachal Oz. And again, this has been the worst massacre of Israeli civilians in our history, I would say, in such a short period of time. I mean, they declared war. This is an unprecedented event, Sal and John. It really is. Shalom from Tel Aviv, Lieutenant Colonel in the Reserves, Jonathan here, and I'm here to give you a uh, nightly update. We're uh, almost 48 hours into the fighting, a little bit less, and uh, the uh, picture and the situation in Israel is a dire one. There's still fighting going on in southern Israel. Our troops are still fighting and hunting down the last terrorists that are still inside Israeli territory. That is something that will 
take a few more hours or maybe even more than that. But at the end of that process, all of the terrorists that came into Israel, by the way, we assessed that there were approximately a thousand terrorists who participated in yesterday's invasion of Israel, about a thousand bloodthirsty Palestinians who went house to house, building to building, in search for Israeli civilians, massacred. Approximately 700 Israelis have been killed, and that's civilians and military included, and uh, more than 2,100 have been wounded. Uh, unfortunately, there's a high number of uh, critically wounded people who may not make it, so unfortunately, the astronomic figure of 700 dead Israelis uh, will not uh, remain that. It is uh, by far the, the, uh, the worst day in Israeli history. Never before have so many Israelis been killed by one single thing, let alone enemy activity on one day. And if you're Americans and want to compare this to something in American history, then this could be a 9-11 and a Pearl Harbor wrapped into one. We're a small country with about eight, nine million Jews living here. And out of that population, uh, we've had uh, 700 killed and 2,100 wounded. Uh, unfortunately, and this is the probably the uh, most dominant factor that will shape the activities for the future, there is a very large amount of Israeli civilians and soldiers held inside Gaza. And uh, that number, I think, in the coming days will be revealed officially. But at this time, I can only say that we are talking about many, many Israelis. Israelis who were uh, forcefully taken from Israel, women, children, infants, elderly, and even disabled people. And I've seen stories of a grandma Holocaust survivor who was taken across the border from Israel to Gaza uh, by Hamas militants um, with two toddlers behind her in a special vehicle. That is the extent of the brutality, the cynicism, and the monsters that we are facing. We have uh, amassed around 100,000 reserve troops who are currently in southern Israel preparing to execute the task that the Israeli government has designated the IDF to do. Our job is to make sure that at the end of this war, Hamas will no longer have any military capabilities to threaten Israeli civilians with. And in addition to that, we are also to make sure that Hamas will not be able to govern the Gaza Strip. Because you see, the situation today is fundamentally different than what it was two days ago. And at the end of this war, we will change the situation for the better around our border in Gaza. And it will be much better for Israeli civilians and it will be better for the Palestinians as well. But that is uh, yet to come. That is uh, in the future. And as of now, we are focusing on burying the dead grieving with the families, rallying our troops, preparing ourselves for the military tasks to come, and uh, focusing on what needs to be done with Hamas after their unprovoked barbaric attack against Israel. I hope that uh, you find this information useful. If you do, follow us and make sure that you uh, get our notifications and information and if you like it, share it with others and retweet it. Make sure that if you agree with the information, the truth that we are spreading, So I wanted to uh, to play that update for the uh, from the IDF 
uh, Israeli Defense Forces uh, spokesman. Um, so, folks, I hope that um, uh, I hope peace prevails, but it doesn't look like it at the moment. It looks like the world is in a turmoil. Um, right now, we have Russia and Ukraine. Now we have the Middle East. It does look like that we are going to get involved. Like I said, they're sending our aircraft carrier USS Gerald R. Ford with a carrier strike group. Fighter jets are now landing all over the Middle East. We have B-52 bombers now landing in Israel and other Arab nations. Uh, other U.S. bases in the area. So, um, folks, just need to keep prayed up. Keep close to Jesus Christ because um, I think things are going to get very, very serious and out of control here in the next week or two. And um, it's a shame. It, it really is a shame that a lot of innocent people are going to die on both sides. Um, I don't. I don't condone war. Um, I don't condone violence, but unfortunately, the leaders of the world do. There are warmongers in every government, in every nation, pretty much, and it's no different over here. So I just wanted to bring you this update. Um, I don't know if we're going to be on later tonight. Uh, we, we might and we might not, but if we don't, just remember, you know, that um, just stay close to God because that is your safest spot is your relationship with Jesus Christ. And uh, under his wings, folks, that's where we should be, under the wings of Jesus Christ, under the wings of God. Make sure that you memorize Psalms 91 and Psalms 23. And uh, just pray for protection. And pray that God will give you wisdom what to do in the days that we are living in right now, because things, I do believe, are going to get worse. And I'm not saying that just to say it, I, I, you know. Just look at the world situation. Um, it's not going to get any better till Jesus Christ actually comes back, folks. It's not. So God bless you. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for everybody that supports our channel. Uh, please share our videos out. We would appreciate that. God bless you. Remember, Jesus Christ loves you. He's coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. Bye-bye.